Cancers can be caused by a variety of agents, by carcinogens, by uh, skin cancer, by uh, ultraviolet, uh, by lung cancers, some of lung cancers by smoking, uh, and there are various environmental exposures and, and so forth. And obviously, um, this is usually, although not always, disease of old age. In around 70s, uh, the community came to realization that all these forces collide in uh, new mutations. So what primarily drives cancer is changes in, in the genome, in DNA of, of cancer cells, uh, of somatic cells in, in the human body. Uh, and these cells start uh, proliferating uh, uncontrollably. So in some sense, this is evolutionary mechanism. There, is, uh, there are mutations, and some of those are picked up by, uh, by selection within, um, within growing tumor. Because of this realization and because of understanding of genetic causes on, uh, of cancer and because of explosion of technology of DNA sequencing, um, there is an idea of or in the promise of cancer genomics. So instead of doing a lot of very imaginative biochemistry and finding genes driving cancer progression, uh, there is a possibility to solve the whole problem statistically. And uh, again, I wouldn't comment on, uh, on the debate side of that and, and, uh, because, of course, there is a viewpoint that uh, careful imaginative biochemistry always uh, pays off. However, the promise of cancer genomics is, um, is with the single method which uh, is going to deliver new oncogenes and tumor suppressors, genes involved in cancer and mass. What is the idea? The idea is that the genome of a cancer cell, of, of, or cells of the tumor, is being sequenced, so all DNA is being read. And uh, within the same patient, genome of a normal somatic cell, most, uh, most commonly blood cells, is also being read. Because of this comparison of these two genomes, um, uh, it is possible to identify mutations which are specific to, uh, to the tumor, specific to cancer. The problem, however, is uh, there are a lot of those mutations. Uh, mutations happen all over, and uh, this really depends on specific sample, on cancer, but as, as a ballpark, every megabase, so roughly a million bases, there is one change in uh, specific to cancer compared to normal cells. What would be the method to identify genes uh, that are important for cancer progression? And the statistical idea is pretty simple, so uh, if you look at many samples of the same type of cancer, those genes should mutate more frequently. Many unrelated samples should carry mutations in the same gene. This idea sounds uh, uh, simple, and uh, worked very well in the beginning because when you when you look at a several, uh, for example, five samples and there is a gene mutated in three of them, that's very unlikely to happen by chance. However, uh, with hundreds of genomes being sequenced, um, it is possible purely by chance to find genes with two, three, or even four events, and uh, it is impossible to pinpoint genes uh, that are drivers of cancer and assign statistical significance to this observation. One possibility is to build a statistical model, estimate rate of mutations, and find genes that have more mutations, which is predicted by this rate. However, different samples may carry very different numbers of mutations, and this model uh, doesn't really work. The other possibility is to fix number of mutations observed in the sample and randomly permute them around and to find genes with multiple events falling in, in this gene. The problem with this approach is that uh, mutation rate along DNA, along the genome, is not uniform. Uh, there are regions of high mutation rates and regions of low mutation rate. And we have to identify factors and build very accurate model of mutational process to make the statistical problem work. And this creates an application for uh, understanding uh, of mutation process in various somatic cells leading to cancer progression. There are two 
possibilities to uh, to base this type of research on. One is uh, years of basic biology studying spontaneous mutagenesis and also mutagenesis uh, caused by some damaging agents. Uh, the second uh, is um, given by new data uh, on physical structure of the genome, uh, chromatin, timing when DNA replicates, and, and so on. We identified a number of factors which are responsible for, uh, we and others I should say, and, and other groups are um, actively looking for factors influencing local mutation rate in cancer. Uh, one such factor is timing when DNA is replicating, because not all DNA is being copied at the same time. There are regions which are being copied early and other regions which are being copied late. Uh, in regions which are being copied late, uh, they carry more mutations than those regions which are being copied early. Separate factor is the amount of expression. Uh, if there is a gene, uh, this gene is sequenced on DNA, which is being used to pr uh, produce RNA, and RNA is being used to produce protein. And the amount of RNA uh, being read from this gene uh, varies and uh, is called gene expression. And interestingly enough, genes which are expressed uh, at high levels, which are probably more important for, uh, for a tumor, they mutate less. The biological explanation, the most likely biological explanation, is in what we call transcription coupled repair. Uh, when the gene is expressed, RNA polymerase, reading the RNA, uh, finds a premutation lesion, damage in DNA, which may lead to mutation. It stalls, and when it stalls, uh, it recruits a repair system called nucleotide excision repair, uh, which excises this strand of DNA and resynthesizes it, uh, resynthesizes it uh, uh, based on a non-damaged strand. So there is active recruitment of repair machinery uh, to genes which are expressed more than other genes. We're also seeing, uh, and other groups as well, a dependency of a mutation rate on uh, chromatin on physical structure, uh, on, on packaging of DNA into chromatin. One model uh, we believe may explain this is again accessibility to repair machinery, to global genome repair, which scans uh, the genome uh, trying to find lesions. And of course it's much easier to find the lesion uh, if DNA is not covered by nucleosome, is not packed into chromatin. So we looked specifically in regions of the genome which are regulatory, uh, which are involved in uh, regulation of, um, uh, of transcription, and therefore they um, are open uh, uh, from, uh, from chromatin. And the data are produced by products like ENCODE and Epigenome Roadmap, uh, for example, by lab of John Stamatianopoulos. Uh, so we observe um, reduced density of mutations in these regions. However, what is of interest is if we compare uh, different samples of skin cancer of melanoma sequenced in levi Graway lab uh, between these two, um, uh, between uh, regions of DNA which are open and regions of DNA which are embedded in chromatin, we observe that those samples, those melanoma samples, were uh, nucleotide excision repair, the specific repair system is not compromised, is not mutated itself, there is this reduction in density of mutations in open chromatin. However, in those samples which carry mutations in, nucle in repair system, uh, some of them do not show the signature. So this is what implicates uh, this repair machinery um, into this relationship between chromatin and um, uh, and um, mutation rate in cancers. Another interesting phenomenon is that uh, if this specific signatures of DNA packaging are measured in different cell types, mutation rate in cancer is correlated the best, there is the strongest correlation in many cases, with specific measurement of cell of origin. For example, skin cancer, uh, melanoma, um, um, local mutation rate is mostly related to chromatin measurements in melanocyte, in cell of origin, or liver cancer, again, uh, the best predictor is liver cell. 
And so it seems that this is a real phenomenon, not some statistical artifact of DNA sequence or something like that. The interesting con uh, consequence is that if you build all these variables and create statistical model uh, of local mutation rate, um, uh, and uh, this is uh, primarily work uh, by uh, Gatti Getz group at Broad Institute, it is possible to uh, remove the statistical artifact of finding genes in regions of high mutation rate as potential uh, drivers of cancer development. It is possible to correct for, for this statistically, uh, and having a model of local mutation rate would allow uh, for finding of specific genes involved in cancer progression and eliminate false findings, uh, genes that mutate a lot. However, um, this is not related to, uh, to development of cancer. So with this models and uh, this methods, uh, there is, of course, big promise of cancer genomics with multiple samples being sequenced. Uh, and one promise is in finding uh, genes new oncogenes and tumor, uh, tumor suppressors, understanding tumor heterogeneity, understanding evolution uh, uh, of, um, of the tumor, uh, and potentially finding uh, specific targets uh, for, uh, for therapy. Again, uh, the promises based on this approach being one template to study variety of cancers. Uh, however, uh, at least I don't believe that this is a substitute for very careful molecular biology and biochemistry experimental studies. Uh, all these findings have to be uh, followed up. But the expectation is that this large-scale genomic effort would bring uh, a lot of genes and a lot of source of thought and source of continuous uh, experimentation to, um, to experimental cancer biologists.